hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I may have found something. Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. This is our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso FG that has been refusing to start for almost a year, but I may have just found something. That's right, for the last 10 months, I've been chasing down why this truck won't start and it may all come down to this. In a recent video, you watched me tear down my CP4 fuel pump. Now you haven't seen that video yet when I'm filming this, but when you're watching this, you have seen it. So some of you may identify what I found after I filmed that video before you saw this video after I made both of them. Whatever the answer to all of that YouTube time travel is, today I'm gonna reassemble the CP4 fuel pump and I'll show you what I found. There are a couple of things probably worth noting. I'm using new O-rings and there are a couple of parts I'll be replacing and all of these parts have been thoroughly cleaned and I've just gone through and sprayed them all with brake clean to make sure that there's no dust or dirt anywhere in the system that I'm gonna be putting together. As I assemble each part into the case, you can see the casing. These are the older parts. These are the parts that I've gone through and thoroughly cleaned. I will be using some small amounts of oil during assembly just so that the first time the pump spins, it's not bone dry. Fingers crossed, this actually solves the starting issue and everything goes back together without a hitch. First, we need to put a new O-ring onto the face of the body so that when we mount the front bearing plate in the shaft, we get a seal around this passage. Now, a little bit of oil on the rear part of the shaft as well as the lobe that the roller rides on. Make sure you line up this little hole with the O-ring. Now I had a lot of trouble actually locating a Torx back for the front bolts, so I've gone with about 60 inch pounds, which seems to be about right for that size of fastener, and it's where I felt about comfortable with them getting snug. You do wanna make sure that in the initial tightening, you tighten them down in an alternating pattern because you're actually pulling this piece down into the case. And then once it's down and all four bolts have kind of snugged up, that's when you wanna put your torque on it. Now the next piece that I'm gonna put in is this uh, fuel inlet pressure or case relief valve. And if you remember when I took it apart, I said that you're supposed to be able to hear this rattle if you shake it, and I couldn't hear it. Well, I did a bunch of cleaning on this as well. I, I haven't replaced this, I'm reusing the old one. Um, I kept spraying into the little hole here, into the end and into the four holes around the outside with some lubricating penetrating oil, PB Blaster. And with doing that over and over again, I could actually start to see the little, again, I'm gonna call it a piston inside move. And now, I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear it rattle. So in you go. Next, we're gonna drop in the follower, roller. And if you recall, when I took it apart, the roller wouldn't roll. That's freed up and it rolls perfectly fine now. A little bit of oil in the bore, as well as on the outside of the follower. And make sure you put this in with the roller parallel with the shaft. Otherwise, you're creating a CP4 catastrophic failure. The next up is the part that kinda does all the work. To make this part easier, you're gonna to wanna to rotate the shaft so that the follower can drop as low as possible so that you're not trying to push that down against the spring all the way in order to get the first couple screws to catch. As the shaft is rotated, you'll find the spot where things bottom out. If you clicked on this video because you're looking for information on how to rebuild the CP4 fuel pump in your Mitsubishi Fuso, or maybe you have a CP4 pump on another engine, make sure you take a look at all the information and links that I've posted in this and all my other videos descriptions. To get the bolt started, just pull down on the assembly to compress the spring slightly. Once started, alternate between the screws to keep the two parts parallel. When you're putting this piece in, because you're dropping it down and tightening it slowly, make sure that the O-ring doesn't drop out and get pinched. You want to make sure it stays in the groove until it's all the way down and in contact with the face. Next, we're gonna install the fuel delivery valve, which sits inside here. Now let's talk about that fuel delivery valve for a minute. That's the only piece that I didn't get apart last time when I was taking the pump apart. And that's because I didn't have the E14 socket to take the cap off. 
Now once I got that and took it apart, here's what it looked like. I think that may have been causing a bit of an issue. This tiny little fuel delivery valve is kind of like a check valve on top of the piston. I don't know if I can get it close enough to focus, but it moves in and out just like that, so that each time the pump comes up, uh, sorry, the piston comes up, it's closed so it can create pressure and push it out. And then it can open up to allow fuel in or the piston to go down. Now, if this is stuck partway open with a tiny little bit of debris, your pump's never gonna build any pressure. Why isn't it gonna build any pressure? Well, because when the piston comes up, if this is stuck open, it just pushes the fuel back to where it came from. That's not gonna let it build any pressure at all. Is that what my problem was? Could this tiny little spring-loaded valve be the cause of why for the past 10 months I have not been able to start the truck? I have two new ones of these on the way, but I've managed to clean this one up, so we're gonna put it back in and see if it makes a difference. And I know somebody out there just went, ha, I told you to check that. And you're right, somebody did tell me to check that and I didn't because I didn't have the tool for it. But this also is something that's totally accessible while the pump is installed in the truck. So if I have the same problem on this one, I should be able to take it apart and clean it and put it back together without taking the pump out of the truck. So once this pump is back together, instead of swapping it out, I'm just gonna try taking that fuel delivery valve out to see if it is also dirty. The delivery valve sits in this cavity above the piston and it's held in place with the cap. Now if the fuel delivery valve was that gummed up with junk and other things like my injectors were the same, there's one more piece that's in the fuel delivery system that I can't really check inside. That is the fuel metering unit. So instead of assuming that this is good or could be cleaned, we're just gonna put in a new one. If you recall on the truck, I've actually installed a custom disaster prevention kit so that if that CP4 pump does grenade itself, the shrapnel doesn't go through the rest of the fuel system and destroy all the injectors. Now it's a little hard to see, but that means in the truck I have a bypass block which allows the fuel to be delivered directly to the fuel metering unit, which then goes to the pumping element. Instead of how it's originally designed where the fuel goes to the casing of the pump to lubricate it, and then it goes through the metering unit to the pumping element and to all your injectors. So if you have any shrapnel that happens in the casing from the two pieces of metal rubbing against each other, now it can't get to my fuel system. That bypass block gets mounted in between the metering unit and the pump casing and it basically blocks off some of the internal passages. Since I don't have a second bypass block, I'm just gonna install this fuel metering unit directly onto the pump. And then if it gets to the point where I have to swap the pumps out, I'll just swap out the bypass block, lift this off and bolt it back down again. Well, there's something that hasn't happened in a while. I ran out of storage while filming that, but the uh, fuel metering unit is now installed. And that means that that CP4 fuel pump is assembled and ready to go back in the truck. But before I go to all the effort of pulling a pump out to swap a pump in, let's pull the fuel delivery valve out of this one and see if it's just got some junk in it as well. If we can flush that out and make that work again, maybe that's all I need to do. Before I crack the cap loose, I'm gonna give the outside a quick clean with a wire brush and some brake clean. This cap is on tight. If you pull this cap off your pump and it feels odd as it's coming off, it's probably because the O-ring is stuck in the body and it's not coming off with the cap. Just pop the O-ring off and put it back on the cap so it doesn't get pinched when you put the cap back on. Now I can very carefully pull the fuel delivery valve out and take a look. It's much cleaner than the one from the other pump. And it doesn't appear to be stuck or have debris in it. It seems just fine. Well, so much for the easy fix on this one. There could still be something else wrong on the inside of that pump. So I think it's worth swapping out my original that I now know has good components and good pathways through it and taking this one back out because I don't really know what's going on inside it. That's as far as I'm gonna get today. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it was useful for someone. Make sure you take a look at the links in the video description, but most importantly, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.